morning. Now, as promised with a, a recent live stream chatting to some of the subscribers, uh, the subject of ghosts came up. Now, I'm very much, a, should we say, a man of science. Um, I need proof to believe things. And at one point, I would have said, ghosts, pff, rubbish. That was until, on three separate occasions, I've seen three things that I cannot explain. Well, not with my rational head, anyway. And this was a long time ago. And I have spoken to very few people about this for fear of people thinking I'm a nutter, quite simply, because it might come across like that. Now, I'll apologise in advance, this video might be quite long, because the stories are relatively complex and they have a background to them. Um, the first occasion I would have been about 18, and the last occasion I would have been 35, thereabouts. So, it, you know, over a, a period of time. And in three separate locations. So, let's, uh, let's jump right in. I'm feeling a bit of an idiot talking about this already now. <laughs> Number one, when I was about 18, broad daylight, in the morning, um, I'd just taken my ex to work, dropped her off at work, I was driving home. Uh, and for a change, for whatever reason, I decided to take one of the back roads home, narrow back lanes, as opposed to the main road. Why? No idea, just felt like it. It was a nice morning, nice, bright, sunny, you know. Um, a lane that I know well, and being a youngster like all youngsters, I was hooning it on a little bit on the way home. On this route, I had to pass a dairy farm. And basically the setup was that the farm was right by the side of the road, but the fields that they owned was the opposite side of the lane. So twice a day, the cows were brought to and fro across that piece of road. There was always cow crap in the road. I was very aware of that. You know, you have to be careful. It's slippery stuff. So I'm approaching the corner where the I know the cow crap is. And just as I'm entering the corner, I see a guy standing in the road. Um, obviously, split-second decision. What you do automatically, jump on the brakes. Which, of course, is the worst thing you can do when you're going around a corner and you're on slippery cow shit. Um, thinking back now, I, I think your brain processes faster than, than you realise. Uh, uh, and this guy, in all intents and purposes, was a farmer, or looked like a farmer, and he was standing in the road. So the assumption is the cows are crossing or, or about to cross or whatever. So yeah, hit the brakes, spun the car, put it through the hedge. No real damage to the car, not badly, bit of a bent wing and things like that, uh, but it was, it was still drivable. The first thing I did was get out of the car um, because I wasn't sure, uh, A, of the damage uh, and B, whether I'd hit the guy. You know, it was a split second thing, I, I had no idea. Saw him, hit the brakes, next thing I know I'm, I'm spinning through the hedge. <laughs> um, no sign of anyone, no one there. As I say, the car wasn't badly damaged, it was still drivable. Managed to get it onto the road, drove home. And that was that, I just put it down to maybe I just misinterpreted what I saw. I made a stupid mistake, I was going too quick anyway, and I crashed the car. That was until um, some months later, we had family that lived a fair distance away and, and they would come and visit maybe once or twice a year. And they were much older than me. They, they were like sort of aunts and uncles. And when I was chatting to the, to the, to the guy, uh, and he said, you know, how's things, what's going on and whatever. 
uh, and I said, oh, I you know, had a minor prang in the car the other day, which was a bit of a pain, not too much damage and whatever. And he said, oh, oh blimey, he said, that's, that's, that's bad news. How did you manage that? Uh, uh, and I explained that I, you know, I spun out on a lane and went through a hedge. Didn't give any more sort of details than that. And he used to live down this way, uh, short term. He, he was a Londoner originally, but he, he had a, a then girlfriend that lived locally, so he, he sort of knew the area. And this is back in the uh, oh late fifties, early sixties. And he said, "Oh, he said I crashed on one of the lanes round here." He, he said, I, I crashed on Popping Hole Lane, which was the lane I crashed on. I said nothing. He said, I was coming down the lane and I came to a corner and there was a bloody farmer standing in the road and he was on a motorbike and sidecar. He hit the brakes and went into the hedge or into the ditch, you know. And he said, turn round. He said, the silliest thing was, he said, there was no bugger there. He said, can't explain it. He said it was right by that dairy farm. At this point, the, the hair's standing up on neck a little bit, as you can imagine. And I said to him, what, a, a guy with a, you know, a flat cap, um, standing there with a stick, a, a long stick, like a walking staff sort of stick, um, and a long, what we would term, or used to term as a stockman's coat about a three-quarter length coat, light sort of tan colour. You used to see it, see it a lot with people working, um, especially with cows. And he goes, how do you know that? He said, I've never told anyone. So I told him what I'd seen and what happened. And this is 30, 40 years apart. We'd seen the same thing in the same location with the same result. And for a minute, we both just sat there and looked at each other, thinking, what the hell? We'd both kept quiet about it. And we'd seen the same thing. Who knows? That was number one. Number two. Number two, I can sort of explain. It could be my mind playing tricks on me, but I don't think so and you'll hear why. To give it some context, when um, myself and my ex-wife were together, um, we were actually living with her parents, who were nice people, uh, especially her father. I got on really well with him. Um, but he sadly died. Um, he, he was getting on a bit. You know, he wasn't sort of unsurprising. He, he did die. And about, I don't remember the exact time scale, but 10 days or so, something like that, just over a week anyway, after he died. I woke up one night, middle of the night for no apparent reason, and it occurred to me that I was really thirsty. So I went downstairs, went to the cupboard, got a glass, went to the sink, filled up my glass, took a drink, and as I turned back towards the stairs, because the stairs went up direct from the kitchen, my ex-father-in-law, George, was standing there. And just for that split second, you, you know them times when your head just can't compute? And straight away, you know, it's like, you can't be here, you're dead. And I'll openly admit now, what I actually said was, to him, and although I had the greatest of respect for the guy, I really loved him, I actually said to him, what the fuck are you doing here? And he just looked at me and smiled, and spoke. And he just said, I've just come back to check on your mother. Not my mother, but the mother-in-law, you know. And um, he said, I see that she's okay. He said, I, I know you're keeping an eye on her. And at that, he just smiled and turned, and he walked towards the lounge. And at this point, my head is racing, just trying to compute what I've just seen, heard, I think. So I walked towards the lounge. Nobody there. Gone. And I stood there like a bloody idiot for a short while, just trying to work it out. And, well, I couldn't. 
I, I just thought, you know, I'm going bloody nuts. So I finished my drink, put the glass on the side and went back to bed. Went back to sleep and actually slept quite well. The next morning I, I wake up in bed um, and I'm just laying there, you know, sort of just thinking about things, you know, just sort of coming to. And my then wife, ex-wife, um, woke up and she turned towards me uh, and I said, just happened to say to her, you sleep all right? And she said, I had brilliant sleep. And she said, I had the most wonderful dream. And I said, oh, really? What was that? And she said, uh, I dreamed that Dad came to see me last night. And of course, at this point, I'm thinking, oh, bloody hell. And I said, really? And she said, yeah, he, he, he just come and he said, sat and, you know, we had a, just a really nice chat. Uh, and, and she said it didn't feel weird at all. And, and she said, I can't really explain any more than that, but I slept really well. Well, at that point, I then told her what happened to me that night. And uh, the, as I was saying it, I, I'm almost thinking, well, did I dream it? Was it a dream? Until we got up and I went downstairs and there was my half-finished glass of water at the sink. So I did get up and I did have a drink. I can't prove that I spoke to him. But it's bloody weird that she dreamt that he visited her as well the same night. I have no answer for that. No answer at all. Um, I know when you, you lose someone and you, you know, grieve for them, your mind can do funny things. But for us both to think that we've seen him and spoke to him on the same night without discussing it, it, you know, just came out. That's a bloody big coincidence. So I'm, I, I really don't know. I don't know on that one. Um... <clears throat> Number three, the third occasion and last occasion, as far as I'm aware so far, that I've seen a ghost. And this one's a bit more personal, shall we say, in a way. Oh, excuse me, I was getting a bit dry. Um, my second wife, some of you will know, some of you won't. Um... We had a, a lovely relationship, a lovely marriage. Um, uh, but sadly, she got a, a, a brain tumour and, and died when I was 34, which was obviously a bit of a, a kick in the teeth, as you can imagine, just when I thought my life was sorted and going the right direction. Well, the following year, when I got together with someone new, and it was, I can't remember whether it was the very first occasion or it was at least very new that this, this person was staying the night at my house. And we just went to bed and we hadn't been in bed long, literally a, a minute or so sort of situation. Nothing had happened yet, if you know what I mean. And. How can I explain this? From the foot of the bed, I, I was looking at the, the bedroom door. And I never close doors in my house. They're, they're always open. And while I'm in bed, I see what I'm pretty convinced was my late wife. Um, come out of our spare room walked past the open bedroom door where I am with the new lady um, paused looked in then continued towards the top of the stairs well I obviously stiffened a little bit and not in a good way <laughs> and the lady that was with me just turned to me and she said did someone just walk past that door? But I just said to her, oh, can't have, there's no one here. Knowing full well what I'd just seen. 
So we left it at that, that she was mistaken what she'd seen. Uh, who knows? Who really knows? Was it me feeling guilt about being in, should we say, the marital bed with someone new? Was it my late wife just checking up that I was doing all right and I was okay? I don't know. I haven't got an answer. But it wasn't just me that saw it. The person that I was with saw it as well. Although I convinced them they must be seeing things. But I know what I saw. So that is the three occasions that I believe, in my heart, I really do believe that I have seen what you could term as a ghost. One complete stranger, two that were quite personal to me. Um, you could say the personal ones were a trick of the mind, maybe. Uh, but the fact that there was two other people involved that either said the same thing or saw the same thing sort of backs it up a little bit that there was something. I don't have the answers. In some manner, I'm still a little sceptical. But I can't discount what I've seen and what I've experienced. So there, that's my, that's my ghost stories, shall we say. I hope it hasn't bored you. Thanks for watching, guys.